This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 8-2 on our books on page 422. The target is I can solve simple two-step equations. We have worked with one-step equations. Now we're moving into two steps. A two-step equation contains two operations. In the equation, 3x plus 1 equals 7, for example. x is being multiplied by 3, and then 1 is added. To solve the two-step equations in any other equations, all you have to do is undo each operation in reverse order. So notice what, I have a little word map here, and notice what uh, they've done with this problem. They've taken a number that you don't know, x, they've multiplied it by 3, and then they've added 1 to it, and they say it equals 7. Well, all we have to do is go back and do it and undo what they did. So now we have to do the inverse operation. It's kind of like driving. If you went north to get someplace, you'd go south to get home. So here we're going to minus 1. And then instead of timesing by 3, we're going to divide by 3. That would undo it. And that will get back to what they had as a number. We don't know what it is yet, so let's go find it. And here's what we would do. Draw our train tracks down. And we have 3x plus 1 equals 7. I'm going to rewrite it just to get rid of that decimal that is right after the 7. I don't like that sitting there. So I just rewrote it. And now what I would do is do the inverse operation, starting with the first thing on the bottom there. That's this part. I got to get rid of this plus one. Well, how do you get rid of a plus one? Yeah, minus it, minus one. So there you go. You got to do it on both sides. You remember that from the one steps that we did. So plus one minus one is zero. It's gone. So we bring down our three X because that's what's left over on the left side of the equation. On the right side, we have seven minus one. That's six. Put your equal sign in between. And that is your new equation you're working with now. Now the next step we have to do is we're done with that one is divide by 3 on both sides. So here's how I show division. I use a fraction bar. And when we do that, 3 over 3 actually cancels or reduces down to 1. So we have 1x. That's what we have. But 1 times x is x. We know that. So we're just going to write x. Now 6 divided by 3 is 2. There's our final answer. How do you know it's right? We do a check. We take the original problem. And we plug in the 2 for the x. So 3 times 2 plus 1 equals 7. Is that true? 6 plus 1 equals 7. It is true. So therefore, the answer is 2. Let's try this one. This one has fraction in it and minus. I'm going to show you how to change everything to addition before we do anything. So the first step I do here is I rewrite this math problem as 25 is equal to 1 fourth times n plus negative 3. I like to change everything to addition because I like addition better than subtraction. And then what I do is I undo what they did. So this might look a little bit harder because I've changed that minus 3 to a plus negative 3. But here's what we do. Let's do the inverse operation of minusing 3, which is actually adding 3. Now, when we do that, I want you to see, what, even though I've changed it to a negative 3 there, when we take a positive or negative 3 and we add it with a positive 3, we're going to get 0. So it disappears. So there it is. Some people might say, why don't we just leave it like minus 3? And you can't. I just like it so that I can switch things around in the future. I told you that in class. It makes more sense to me to do it that way. So here we are. And I should move these things down. So we've got 1 fourth times n left over. And then 25 plus 3 is going to be 28. And then how do you get rid of this fraction in front? If you remember, this is now a one-step equation here. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 1 fourth. So we can multiply this side by 4 over 1, which is 4, and the other side, which is 4. And when we do that, these cancel out to 1, and we're left with this n that sits here. And 4 times 28, if you do that on your calculator, you're going to get 112. Does it work? Sure it does. 25 equals 1 fourth times 112 minus 3. When we do that, here's what it comes out to be. 1 fourth of 112 is 28. You do that in your calculator. And then 28 minus 3 is 25. So it does check out. Now, the other way would be to actually divide by 1 fourth. Because if you actually do the map on this, the map is they took a number, they multiplied it by 1 fourth, 
and then they subtracted three. They got 25 to be the answer on the left side there. So we'd have to go and do add three to both sides and then divide by one fourth. So you can divide both sides by one fourth. It's the same as multiplying by four. And you'll get back to that end of being 112. But you try these three, stop the video, come on back, see how you do. All right, so solve each equation and then check your answer. So here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it pretty quick here. Because once you catch on to this, it's pretty simple. So we've got a number times three plus two equals 20. So the last thing I said was plus two. Well, I'm gonna minus two then. I gotta inverse, do the inverse operation. So that becomes 18 on the right side and becomes three X on the left side, put equal sign. So the minus two gets rid of the plus two. But you gotta remember it's a balance. So you gotta do it on both sides or else things get unbalanced. Now the next thing is to get rid of this three in front. Well, they're multiplying right here. Well, we divide to get rid of it. So the inverse is dividing by three. That becomes one X. And one times x is x, so we just we're done there. We got x by itself. Remember, we're trying to isolate the variable. So 18 divided by three is six. Go to check it. Three times six plus two does that equal 20? Sure does. How about this letter B here? Well, they took n, multiplied by two, added five, and got negative one. So the last thing I said was plus five. I'm going to minus five on both sides. So when we do that, this cancels. We're left with 2n on this side. And then on the right, we have negative 1 minus 5, which is negative 6. And then inverse of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. And that gets 1n, or n. And then negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. There's the answer. Check it for yourself. 5 plus 2 times negative 3. Is that equal to negative 1? It sure is. Now... Last one, another one with fractions. Okay, what do we do? One half, I took A, multiplied by a half, and then added nine. So the inverse would be minus nine first. Cancel those out. And then we negative one minus nine is negative 10. And that equals one half A. Because that's what's left over. Bring it on down. Now, how do you get rid of the number in front of the letter there? Well, that means multiply there. So let's divide by one half. Divide by one half. When you divide by one half, this becomes one. One half divided by one half is one. And we've got a left over, so it's one a. But now here it is, negative 10 divided by one half. Negative 10 divided by one half. Well, guess what? That's the same as negative 10 times two. Flip it over, it's times the reciprocal. Anytime you divide by a fraction, divide by fraction, you know this rule. KCF, keep change flip. Keep change. Here's the change, and then flip the two, or the one-half to two. So it's actually going to be negative 20, and that is the answer. Want to check it? No problem. Negative one, is that equal to one-half times negative 20 plus nine? Sure is. All right. How about equations with negative coefficients? What do you do there? Well, it's the same thing. Change everything to addition. That's what they're trying to teach you here. Because if you don't, then this happens typically, and you can read it on your own. So step one is rewrite this with an, as an addition problem, which means add the opposite. Instead of subtracting 3, you add negative 3x. So then we draw our lines down. And what did they do with x? They multiplied it by negative 3 and added 6. So we have to subtract 6 from both sides first. That's inverse operation. Gets rid of the 6 there. Bring down our negative 3x. That's where the mistake is typically made. Most people only bring the three down, but you gotta bring that minus. Whatever's in front of a, a number, in this case a minus, belongs with the number. So you gotta put it with it. That's why that is there right there. Now, 21 minus six is 18. Excuse me, 15. Talking too fast. So that's a 15. And when we take 15, once I have it up here, take 15 and we divide it by I am just looking at it really bad. I don't like that. When I take 15, we have to divide by negative 3 on both sides to get rid of this negative 3. So x is going to be negative 5. Let's take a look at the check. I actually have it already prepared over here. So we put negative 5 in for x value and then multiply 
subtract, you get 21 on both sides, and it does check out. How about you give it a shot with these three? Here we go. I'll do these in green this time. All right, so here we go. We've got uh, 10 minus 2 thirds P equals 52. I like to write it all as a addition problem, just in case I want to switch things around because addition is commutative. Now, I have to get rid of the 10. I got a plus 10. Well, guess what? It's going to be a minus 10. So minus 10 from both sides. And that becomes gone. And now we have negative 2 thirds times P is equal to 42. So how do we undo the multiplication of two, negative 2 thirds? Well, multiply by its reciprocal. Or you divide by negative 2 thirds. I like to just multiply by the reciprocal is flipping the fraction over is the same as dividing by the fraction. So when we do that, these will cancel to 1. And then what do you do here? Here's a fast way to do this. If you ever have a whole number times a fraction, see if the bottom number on the fraction goes into the whole number. Because really it's 42 over 1. So I'm just cross-canceling here. Does 2 go into 42? It sure does. It's 21. Now I'll take 21 times the negative 3, the top number, and that is your answer. So P is equal to negative 63. You can check it. It does work. How about this one? Got our train tracks. We're going to undo this by subtracting 2 first. And then be left with negative 3x on the right side and negative 21 on the left side. Then we divide by what's in front of the letter because that's the inverse operation of multiply. That's negative 3. That cancels down to x or 1x. And then negative 21 divided by negative 3 is 7. Two negatives make a positive when you're dividing. That does work. You can plug it in and check it yourself. And then this last one. Let's add two. I'm going to do it as quickly as possible. You can see how fast these do go once you actually get the hint of what to do. So now we're left with this because that goes away. And what's the inverse operation of taking a n and dividing it by negative 3? Well, multiplying by negative 3. So you always do something with that number, negative 3 in this case, so you're going to multiply by negative 3. So I will multiply by negative 3. When you do that, that cancels, and you're left with n is equal to... 48, because two negatives make a positive when you multiply. You can check it, it does work. All right, next. So sometimes it's necessary to combine like terms before you solve any equation. So take a look at this, this first one here. Solve negative 2y plus y minus 5 equals 11. Just like yesterday I was saying, anytime you see a letter by itself, put a 1 in front of it. Now we've got minus 5 as well, so I'm going to change this whole problem to negative 2y plus y, or 1y, and then plus negative 5 equals 11. I like to have all addition. See how these are all now addition and not any subtraction? Then I put things together that go together, like this negative 2y plus 1y is negative 1y, because you can put them together because they're the same they're like terms, as we say. I like to say same family. They go, they go together. Now we've got this math problem, which we had on the previous pages here. So what's the inverse of adding negative 5? Adding 5. So when we add 5 to both sides, you can see negative 5 plus 5 becomes 0. And 11 plus 5 is 16. And then we have negative 1y here. Because that's, we haven't done anything with it yet. Now we divide both sides by negative 1 to get rid of that negative 1 in front. And y is equal to negative 16. Now does that work? Is that the correct answer? Let's take a look at the check. When you plug negative 16 in for the two y's there, you do your math on the left and you get 11. And that's what was on the right, 11. So negative 16 is the solution to that equation. All right, last two. You try these, turn or pause the video, and then come on back and see how you do. All right, step one, draw our train tracks. Step two, we put a one in front of that. I'm going to get rid of this right here. Put a one in front of the x. So we have 1x plus 4x. How many x's is that? So we're combining like terms. That's 5x's. 
we still have 45 on the right side. So now we have a one-step equation from here. Next thing is divide away the 5 because it's being multiplied. So the inverse of that is dividing by 5. That's 1x, which is just 1x. And 45 divided by 5 is 9. That is the correct answer. Go ahead and check it and you'll see. And the last one here. I see that I have a letter and by itself, and I also have a subtraction. Well, I'm going to change the subtraction to addition. I'm also going to put a 1 in here, so it's going to be negative 1a. Remember, we go like this. Now, the reason why we do that is, and this is a perfect example to show this, so that we can reorganize and put things together. So notice what I'm about to do here. I'm going to move this, this one to this spot and say negative 1a. And I'm going to move this one to this spot, 13. You can only do that when you have addition. You can't do that with subtraction. That's where kids get in trouble and get uh, negatives mixed up. So now we can put these together. And 2a plus negative 1a is 1a. And we still have the plus 13. Don't forget that. So you could write it like this now because there's nothing else we need to do with that 1. 1 times a is a. Now we have to get rid of this 13 by doing the inverse operation, and it's gone. So a is equal to negative 3. Even though it's backwards, that is okay. You can still rewrite it if you want, like this. That's called a reflexive property. That is it. Now, for better understanding, you can rewatch the video or, of course, read the examples in the book. They have a couple other uh, methods of how they can do it. And then you can also check out the personal tutor videos on our online textbook. This has been a Friday Shoes production.